read of black folks and watch this fine. Okay, I think I'm going to be going the right direction because that's going to be coming at us. And check this right here. Watch this area right there, okay? And as I, I'll back it back out again. And as you see that sun CME flare go back to the sun and the supergiants, okay? And the camera got around to take a look at it because as you know, we normally see on H1, we see the supergiant massiveness and the sun, okay? And we know that the sun is almost 11 times the size of Jupiter. Okay, it takes 11 Jupiters. Okay, now watch this CME come off of something below, more than likely at this shot. Uh, usually we have, now we've been watching that, you usually have either, I believe, Mars or Jupiter, or if it was from H1 ahead, the blue, the blue shot, of whichever one that would be, uh, we could possibly get Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Earth way up here, somewhere in this area here, straight away from the sun, okay? Check this CME action from either the supergiants or the sun, as I'm going to draw that, basically I'll just hit the next step that I've got again on this step layer, okay? And watch this area right here, and you're going to see something below either Jupiter or all of us and Earth and all of our planets down here flare, okay? Now watch. Okay, I got the sun flare going back into the sun, right? Okay. Now, watch as it, something reacts down here, and it's not a damn lens for We've already proven that theory. My theory is correct. Even more on this. Because watch this gigantic diamond-shaped CME, and if you really watch this too, we blow it up to 400, you see a massive planet about somewhere in here. Okay? But it's low. It's really safe because it's low because Earth and Jupiter or something are pretty much up in this area up here, folks. Okay? Now, we're going to see this CME right here. Okay? So watch there. From something below, and more than likely than that would be below Earth, and that possibly could be our super giant. As you watch, it's flaring right now, and I'll hit step again, and it's going to flare. See that flare? And then I'll reverse so you see it go away. Okay, so now you're going to see it come into effect, and you're going to see the sun and the supergiants CME come towards below Earth and Jupiter, because Earth and Jupiter would be way up here. Okay, so it, here it comes that flare. So was it Venus again, or what was that below? And has something that's near that CME? Now, I was here in Nehemiah's down, I've been trying to find Nehemiah, and it, I've seen a bunch of Jackrabbit BS that uh, Kerasoft or some sort of power and control has put on being able to go to Nehemiah. Uh, I'm looking for my link. They stole my link. I'm going to find I'm going to be able to get back there. I actually got Rothabara back because they stole my whole link page out of my email. So here we go again, and here comes the CME. And I just caught it at the corner of my eye because I was shot up at 400% and was watching everything else. So there you go again, folks. That's not the sun down there, Flaren, okay? That's one of the super giants smaller suns or something is making Venus or Jupiter or one of the other planets again flare. And it's reacting to this gigantic CME action from there of the sun and the supergiants, okay? So I'll just play with it again a little bit more again. I think I'm going to be stepping either forward. Yeah, this is going to be going just like normal time. CME starts coming, and then you get that reaction down there. So there are atmospheres on planets and stars that react to CMEs in space from the sun. And we've already known it, proved it, and it proves it even more right there, okay? Because you will see that as I reverse that sun CME action to the right is going back into the supergiants, folks. Okay? Okay, and then I'll just click, 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 and here comes the CME action. And then watch the left-hand corner by the time and the clock and the H1A emblem. And you will see there it comes and there it is. Something goes kapush cut. Okay? So Venus or whatever planet. So we're going to go up here to 300%, a little custom action. And then i got to drop down and hit the player. And I'll just hit play. And we'll see what we get for action here. And you should be able to possibly be high enough that you'll end up seeing some of the action of some of the things that end up showing up. Just doing a mic check when I do that little blow. And you can see that in the little left corner there that it did the CME action. Maybe it'll do more CME action when I get farther through the tape, too. So I'll watch the corner a little bit. And there you get more.
So there you go. And then see that gigantic? It's like when the CME comes off, it hits some planet midway about right there. There, see that? How it hits something out there? So we know that there's something right there, folks. There's a massive planet below the supergiants. And but what I see in this look, Setchi, we love the action and thing like that. That looks hella safe for Earth and everything like that because anything that's like that is way down low, and then that's good that that's down low also. See, Earth is, we're hanging out in a rabbit hole, folks. We are in a very safe, precarious area up here. I mean, not precarious. Well, all space probably precarious, but we are in a very safe area because we know by watching all these little H1As all the time that more than likely Earth is straight away up here somewhere, about right there or somewhere left, okay? Because this is H1A ahead, okay? That means when you're at the daytime sunlight, when you go outside and look up straight away at the sun, this satellite's up to the right-hand side, and the B is over to the left-hand side at an angle. Each one of them. H1A here at a right on the right-hand side, shooting back left towards the sun and Earth, okay? So that's why I say this is all really nice and safe, because whatever huge planet is, something is in there that's catching that CME, is down low and so is that because we are way up and as you know when this lights this up all these huge planets that we are seeing down below earth on a lot of the different soho shots okay so we are hanging out in a very safe position i think and there is just massive action up there with the super giants in the sun and there's some huge planet right about there somewhere that's getting that ush down on the bottom there okay so now that's just why I say we're so safe, folks. Now when this is this is part of the satellite arm, okay? But as this comes along, this shields out also the sun in the box back here, okay? Everybody's always arguing it's part of the satellite. Yes, it's part of the satellite, but what it does is it blocks the sun and the supergiants, that beginning little leg that I always show you of the supergiants, the beginning little point. You can see the glow right here above it, okay? And you can see you don't really see much of it because it's a very thin part of it. They only get this satellite so close to cover up that big, and then you will see all that action. You can see all the light coming from back here and back there, and then off to the right. Now that's not the same shot that I showed you where the super giants were at before. This is a different one. This is H one two A ahead, okay? Like I say again, that the idea that this is shooting at Earth and then it's a, res a reverse reflection shot just like flipping a mirror because the earth when on you look at it ahead anything with an a on it ahead is when you're standing on earth and looking up at the sun it's to the right hand side okay then it shoots across and h1b is up on the left hand side when you look at the sun okay so this is a flipped reflection shot because it this arm here and everything blocks out the sun and the super giants glow, which is all down in here. Okay, and as you can see, we have the Milky Way galaxy that we are basically, basically, I do believe that this is the Milky Way galaxy, like there. Okay, so it's, I want to try to figure out, and yeah, I'm still trying to figure out. I want to figure out all these planets down here, or they new finds, or is that us flipped around, and then that's the idea that that's Venus there, and all like Mercury and and, but then there we got Mars over there, okay? So, and we know that all the sun and back here and everything like that, that all is usually in a line as an orbit going around the Earth. At least that's all the way astronomy has always showed it. And then we get H12b behind. And so, when you're on Earth, you're looking at the sun, this is on your left hand side, okay? So, as you see, the bright side of Earth getting sun from the sun over here on the blocker, which the blocker is part of the satellite, yes, blocks that. And i.e., this is part of the supergiants here. Okay? This cluster and up to the right. So, when we had that shot just before this, I think it's H1A ahead. You see the interesting stuff that's below because, as you see, it's just like we've always been taught in astronomy that they're always pretty much on a railroad line. Mars and Venus and Mercury and Jupiter. Okay? All pretty much somewhat level.
cruising along if we all follow the sun. Okay, the sun's over here, and we rotate 365 days in a year around the sun. It takes 365 days to go, just like this here curve here, around the sun. Okay, because the sun's in the supergiants over here, and as you see, the satellite, you know, get a little bit of perspective, somewhat, the value of the satellite's hella up above us, Venus, and Earth, is to be able to stay up above all the supergiant action, because the sun is in the well. The sun's in the well, and so is the supergiant. So we are up high and rotating around this direction, this direction, my pointer should be showing, and then that's our, basically our orbit. Even though it's the lens of the camera, that's our orbit. And honestly, that might be actuality of space. We don't really know if that's the lens of the camera. That actually could be the magneticness that we know, the outside wall of space that we know, or is it just the lens? NASA would know that to be able to tell us it's sketchy. So is it the lens? Or is it actually the magnetosphere? Because we have seen the curvature magnetosphere of shots before on Sechi and Soho that show us the kind of a wave curve that it's got that we have our rotation of 365 days a year around like this. And yes, we rotate to the east towards the sun. Okay? Earth. Okay? Okay, so a lot, as you see the slider here, a lot of earthquakes in a very short amount of time, folks. Okay, a lot of stuff is in U.S. Okay, Utah, Colorado, East Coast, Central down there. Okay, now just a little amount of time right there, pull this around and look at all the action right over there. Pretty much straight in a line right now. Super giants, main sequence, main run, because all those suns are in a row back there. The sun and all those super giants are in a big alley. And it's just bam straight across because that's a you look at the slider here how short a time it is okay and then look at how much mass of all a bunch of quakes right there right in a row bam just like that and then the super giants fork down here okay and then the Earth rotates to the east all the time so then it, it hits on other areas and we have seen quakes if I pull this up you'll get quakes over here up north that have hit very rare. That's very rare to have a quake there. And I don't know if I'll be able to turn the bottom because we know we've had stuff on the bottom. Okay. But see, that's where it comes up at. You see, they don't like to let me show you that on the bottom that it's coming up from. And that's basically, you've seen that uh, flare that we're seeing off one planet or whatever, way down on the bottom. And that's where you get all that, that action. All these 6.2, 6.6, 5.6, everything like that. When it first comes up, whammo, comes over top. And then there's the direction of that curve of that sun all the way around. Okay? They didn't like that. And I'm not playing with you because I know windows. And that's why they call it windows, folks. They can always keep an eye on what you're looking at. And when you get, if I can get the globe, to pull back down on the bottom. And you'll see there's also action over there. So then it just basically, as we're rotating around 360 degrees like that, it comes up on the bottom like I showed you. And then it rotates around. I just can't get the ball to roll all the way around the Earth. You can see it. See, it rotates all around. That whole earthquake pattern is straight up and around the Earth. You see that? And then a little bit of a break up on the fork back towards that way. And then the Earth is rotating around to the right all the time. And I can't really get down to the right direction of the tilt. The axis tilt is probably something like that right now. Probably a little bit over on top, but I don't think I can get it to tilt like that. Okay? As you can see, this stuff, I think I can play the ball like around like a beach ball and get it to go all the way around, but now it's not going to work. It's fighting with me, so let's just go ahead and we'll X out of that. And it might flash, but I'm going to take some pictures real fast that I took off of this shot, okay? So, and then I took you and showed you that flare there. So you've seen all that. And then we'll basically back up here. We should be able to get all this in. Some objects up on that from that shot and that date and that time right there that I showed you. This interesting stuff here, and this is where it's really wild and interesting when we zoom in on this. So check that out. Look at that huge planet in the V. Pretty awesome, huh? That right there, folks. Check that out. That is badass. Check that out. And a big old Oort cloud up there. So is that Nibiru in the Oort cloud? We'll find out, folks. Because that shit's there. And it's a pretty sight last, or this morning, Antarctica.
more money or two zeros. 